Hey, now that's what I'm talking about. I have a full house. Ah, I'm not surprised because my guest today, she's just amazing. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. She's got it all. For a long time, she was in our space, in our face. We all talked about her. And then suddenly, she went quiet. Really quiet. All we hear about to read about here, about her, the gossip, the rumors, the whatever. But she has rebranded herself. She's doing amazing things behind the scenes that we don't know about it. Today, we want to go under her skin. Find out who she is. How did she grow up? Why did she decide to rebrand herself? What is the bigger goal, bigger aim, bigger picture for her? Because when she was in our space, there were lots of young people who wanted to be like her. Now that she's left the old and is into the new, what happens? My guest today is the one and only beautiful, exciting, intelligent, fashionista, what have you. That's why I also decided to look fab today, you know. The one and only Sandra Ancobia is my guest today. We take a break. Yes. 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 Because, listen, if you know Sandra, you can't afford not to love her. I mean, if you know her, you will just love her. But I know today you will get to know the real her. Well, let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. Ophelia Crossland Designs made this dress for me. I'm so grateful to them. And of course, my hair by Inshilo, the one and only Inshilo. You know, she does it all. My makeup is also by Inshilo. You know, this is my makeup is different, yeah? Mm-hmm. The woman is upping her game. It's by Inshilo. Thank you so much. Makeup products, as usual, from Paba Cosmetics. They've got all the range. You can't go wrong. Go there and you get everything that you want. And then my beats. Today, my earring, it's called Titanic. <laughs> and my bangles and anklets, of course, by Sun Beats and All. She does it all. Thank you so, so much um, to her. We take a break. When we come back, we meet Sandra and Kobia rebranded. My name remains Ohineyue Gifty Auntie. We'll be back. New at Depa Dumas from GTP, the name we know and trust. Premium quality fabrics with a smoother feel. New designs and richer colors. New at Depa Dumas for the woman who knows her worth. GTP, quality fabrics printed in Ghana. GTP, timeless. GDA Concepts, producers of the Standpoint TV program, is offering the following services. Studio space available for rent, for video shoots and conferences, with seating capacity of 120 people at an easily accessible location. Standby generator available. Conference chairs also available for hiring. Sale and rental of Sony Z7 cameras. You can also contact us for video coverage for events, event organization, documentaries, TV commercials, etc. Locate us at 55 Olympic Avenue, Kukum Limli, near Joy FM. Call 050-133-9642 or 0544-844-122. Welcome back to the standpoint. If you just join it today, my guest is the one and only, the beautiful, the intelligent, the exciting, the soft spoken Sandra Ancobia. We're going to find out who she is. Hey, the famous question <laughs> <laughs> Who she is? How did she grow up? We go, we'll get to know up close and personal, you know, kind of um, conversation. That's what we are going to have with her. And let me say thank you to. The groups that have come to the studio today, to her, every day these days, I will announce that Sandra and Kobia is coming. Because today I have a very full house. <laughs> I have um, young ladies and uh, men from Limitless Organization. 
Welcome to the studio. I also see some ladies from Wisconsin SRC here. And Adeshi Incorporated. <laughs> Good to have you here. As I said earlier, my guest is Sandra Ankobia. Sandra is a lawyer, an entrepreneur, and a humanitarian. And I can attest to that. She's one of the first, in fact, apart from Reverend Istud Anaba, Sandra was the first person to give the Girl in Need Foundation a thousand Ghana cities. <laughs> I never ever forget that. I never forget that. But entrepreneur, I didn't know that bit of you. <laughs> yes, I haven't really pushed that aspect of me, but very soon I will start. You're very business minded? Um, a little bit. I mean, in this day and age, I, I believe we all should be. <laughs> it's very necessary. But good to see you. It's good to see you too. It's you, been what? A I few know, months? It's been a few months. Yeah. yeah. You're looking and well. Thank you. Thank you. And I can't believe that we are 10 years and over, and this is the first time. Congratulations! <laughs> this is your well first done. time on the standpoint. I know. 10 years, say. Sandra. You no, know, good things take time. I say. know, right? Mm -hmm. I'm here now. That's why I love you. <laughs> good, good, good. Now, what have you been up to? You've gone quiet for some time now. Um, yes, a little bit. I actually went off of social media for a while, so I'm sure that's what you mean by quiet. No, I, I mean... I, Apart, you know, you used to be on TV. Right. Then right. we used to, of course, social media as well. But you were kind of in our space. <laughs> in, in your face. In our faces. You know, to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, um, I've been off television for a while, I think about two years now. Mm. Um, the last show I was on was the morning show on TV3, mm. New Day. Mm. Um, I took a break of television because I, I wanted some time to to um, focus on other things, most especially the law. I wanted to get some courtroom experience and just generally some legal experience because I wasn't getting that time. Yeah. Um, the morning show was a live show. It started at 6 in the morning, finished at 10. By the time we are done with production meetings and everything else, by the time I left the station, it would be almost noon or after 11. And um, in Ghana, we go to court in the morning. So mm -hmm. I, I was missing all of that. All of my mornings were gone. It was Monday to Friday. So it was very... That's interesting. It was because tough. at a point, I thought you were in that... Into the law thing. I, or you know, to it, court. Well, I don't really like going to court. I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah. um, it was straight out of law school or straight out of getting calls to the bar that I started with the morning show. So I wasn't getting that courtroom practice that I, I, I wanted... So after a while, I just I had to make a tough decision, hmm. and so I decided to take a break off of um, television or off of that show in particular, so I could dedicate or focus more on doing that. But guess what? When I went back, or when I I started um, practicing seriously, or started litigation, started going to court, I realized that I didn't like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I know. In hindsight, maybe I, I should have just um, taken a couple of months or something to just explore it a bit. Right. But, I mean, it was all a very good experience, so I don't regret any of that. Um, I found out that I wasn't a litigator. Mm. And I feel the reason why um, I'm not so into courtroom practice is because of how things are done in this country. Mm. The courtroom processes are just not very attractive or appealing to me. Everything is just long and things don't go the way. I mean, forget what you see on television and all these legal and law shows and everything is just moving fast. Right? It's not like that. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. Everything is long and it's, it was just, the, that passion was just not there yeah. for litigation. Okay. So you hardly find me in the courtroom. But that being said, there are times when you don't have a choice. You have to go. go. Mm. I mean, I don't have my own firm. I work for people. So when there are certain cases or there are certain times when you have to go to court, you have to go. But I try not to go <laughs> if I can. Not every lawyer goes to court. In fact, there are very renowned lawyers the world over who don't go to court. But they are some of the biggest lawyers. Not mm. everyone is a litigator. In fact, in the UK, um, on which our legal system is modeled on, they have a strict or they have a, yeah, a strict... Um, 
Difference, I mean separation. Okay. You have solicitors and you have barristers. Yes. Solicitors don't go, go to, to court. court. Barristers go to court. They are all lawyers. Okay. In Ghana, we don't have that separation. It's up to you to decide Sorry. what you want to do. Okay. So I have realized that I'm not a litigator, mm. so I don't go to court. Okay. So people find or feel like you don't practice or you're not really a lawyer if you don't go to court because, mm. like you said, well, most... I, I think, or I used to think, that the law really is in the courtroom or is about the courtroom, courtroom. but that's not a correct perception. We'll but come back to the court because it's, it's still, I mean, you're still a lawyer. Yes, you're still practicing still law practice. in a way. But, you know, apart from the fact that you were, you were known as a lawyer being on TV, you also tapped as a fashionista. What's that one? Um... <laughs> I don't think that's a tag I can ever run away from. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that came about. All I know is that I, I like to look good. And some people think that I, I look good or I put things together well. You do. So mm -hmm. I, I accept that. But I mean, that's not all that there is to me. So I don't is it just wake about your up. dressing? Because we used to see you, you travel to places, you take pictures with your designer bags and, you know, well, like you, were, you also tag as a, a, a model, right? A photo model? Well, I did a bit of modeling back in the day. Um, sometime around 2001, 2002. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm just revealing how old <laughs> I am now. <laughs> like, yeah, um, when I was a bit younger, I did a lot of runway modeling. Okay. And so... Um, and you were a beauty queen as well. Well, you I could. didn't win the crown. I but came you second. Did. You I came was second. first runner-up yes, in course. Miss Ghana in 2002. I missed the crown by two points. Oh, yeah. you're still our queen, isn't Thank she? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, at the time, I was devastated. I mean, I thought I should have won and all of that. Why did you all. take part in the pageant in the first place? Why did I take part in Miss Ghana? I think someone just saw me and said, well, I think, uh, have you heard of Miss Ghana? There's a pageant coming up. I think you should participate. I think you'd do well. And, and I did. I mean, <laughs> I've, I'd never had dreams of being a beauty queen or yeah. growing up. I don't remember ever thinking that this was the path I was going to take. I, it never crossed my mind. It just happened. Right. And um, I didn't win, but... So you first runner-up. I was first runner-up, and um, I went on to contest Miss Echoas. That's what uh, Miss Ghana goes to Miss World, and then the first runner-up goes to Miss Echoas. Okay. And I came third in that so as Ms. well. Miss Echoas as yes. well. Okay. In 2002. Okay. And um, after that, I just kind of left all of that and went back to school and... Mm. The rest, like they say, is history. Yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> but do you, do, do you think that kind of launched you into the fashionista? Possibly. Kind of? Possibly. I am sure. Because I, I modeled. I, I fell in love with clothes. I was, I was working with clothes. I was working around clothes. So I'm sure maybe that love also came from there. Mm. I, like I said, even with the clothes or the fashionista tag, I don't know how. All I know is that I... I like to look nice, and mm -hmm. I think I can put stuff together well. And so I don't go to bed dreaming or thinking about what I'm going to wear tomorrow. It's not, it's not that serious. It's not. Mm -hmm. I wake up, I or I know I have an event, or there's something coming up, or I'm, and I, in my mind I just okay, what do I have in my closet? I just put stuff together, mm -hmm. and I know this is what I'm going to wear. So mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a job. It's not something that. I am so particular about. Lucky, yeah. I'm just lucky or maybe blessed that I can put things together mm -hmm. well and people appreciate it. Did you like the way the media portrayed you? No. You know, like no. every time they show pictures, Sandra could be a no. In the beginning, mm -hmm. it was fine. In the beginning, I mean, hey, it, was, it was nice. So it was, it was fun. You know, yeah, <laughs> it was fun. It was, I didn't know any better, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was okay. But it got to a point, um, and that's what I was talking about earlier, about going off of social media. I was... Um, I, was, I took a step outside of the showbiz Biz. world and I okay. was hanging around more around people of my type. Okay. You know, so it became um, a bit problematic for me because I, you know, when the media would write about me, like you said earlier, it would be about the fashionista or the sexy Sandra or, you know, Sandra in one exotic location Should somewhere or, you know, it was just... With I her felt Gucci like bag and exactly the, it the was most all, expensive shoes. Exactly, it was all a bit too Material shallow estate. for me. Mm. It became too shallow for me. I felt that there was more to me than that, 
And um, I'm not exactly blaming the media because obviously I, I put myself out there like that. They can only feed off of what you give them. Mm. That was the lifestyle that I had portrayed. Okay. So that was what they put out there. So then I, I had to take a step back. I decided I had, to, I had to control the narrative. I had to give them what I wanted them to write about. I had to okay. give them that other side of me that I wanted to portray. Mm. And so um, I went off of social media. I just kind of um, strategized a bit and thought about how and I could took communicate. Out, you took off most of the pictures? I took, yes, I took, off, I took off a lot of pictures from my past life. I mean, not that there was anything wrong with it. It's still me. It's still who I am. I'm not running away from Probably. that part of me. So, yeah. I, I mean, I still like to travel. I still like to look good. All of that is me, but that's not all there, there is, is to, to me. You. So I had to show them the other sides as well so that there would be a balance. Mm. So if you notice now, I'm, now I post a bit more of those things as well, but I'm also posting more of my professional side. Yeah. And so now you find that... And motivating, I, I read some motivational messages from you exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's all part of the, the strategy. Right. So now instead of um, saying, oh, the sexy Sandra and Kobia, you find them saying... The lawyer. lawyer, or even if they're going to use sexy, the sexy lawyer, lawyer. which is fine. Yeah, the lawyer that exactly, yeah. you're showing all, all there is, all the other parts of me as well. So I found that the narrative has changed a bit, and that was because I owned it. Made I, 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 I made effort. a conscious effort to control it. So the rebrand, that, that's what the whole rebranding was about. I didn't like how I had been portrayed, and so I had to show the other sides of me as well. Mm. And basically you see why is. I say she's intelligent. <laughs> Someone would have decided to fight the media. You cannot fight the but media. But she decided that she's going to give the media what she wants them to write about. And it's worked. I must and it's worked. It's, it's worked. It's worked. I find, I mean... <laughs> Awesome. I'll, I'll, to, I'll yeah, give you a okay. few examples. Yeah. Um, in the past, if I were to be invited to places to maybe um, speak to students or whatever, give speeches or something, it would be more about the lifestyle stuff like clothes or mm. maybe a, a fashion design school or something. But now I'm being invited to speak as more serious engagements, which yeah. for me is what I was, that was what I set out to do. Indeed, and yes. so I'm seeing the results. That's yeah. how I know that. It's worked. I mean, not that if you invited me to come and talk about fashion, mm. I wouldn't go. But Would you say that now you are impacting lives? Oh, definitely. Instead of just... Definitely. Instead of just, you know... Influencing. influencing and I wasn't sure if it was... Positive. positive you know. That's yeah. relative anyway. But yeah. I feel like this is... This is more of what I want to do. Or this is more of what I want to portray. You're right. Let me take a break. Uh, this is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> One, did somebody say all? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one and one, one on one with Sandra and Kobia. Let me say thank you to Go Got You Got as a woman. Uh, you Got is very good for you. And Sandra says that's her best. Okay. You Got. I mean, the best on the market. Go Go Do You Got is made here, right here in Ghana, you know, by Painter Foods. Say thank you to them. Royal Drinks by Casa Preco Company Limited. And of course, our Wake Purified. Drinking water, also by Casa Preco Company Limited. House of Foods always makes sure that we are belly full, <laughs> you know. And Cake Techniques also gives us some, you know, thing to the, the sweet after meals, the cupcakes, you know, the pies and what have you. So we are grateful to them. Yep, Cleaning Services keeps our environment very, very clean. We take a break when we come out, continue. But remember, this program is also aired on ABN TV on Sky Channel 195 across Western Europe, parts of Canada and Asia. And we are also on Virgin TV Channel 842 in UK. Okay, our website www.thestandpoint.com.g8 is powered by Dream Oval. We'll be back. Water gives life. Water is life. Enjoy the pure, refreshing taste of awake, purified drinking water, which comes in a uniquely designed bottle with a lemon green tap. Water 
is your perfect way to stay hydrated. And remember, for every bottle you buy, an amount will be donated to the National COVID Thoracic Center, Ghana. Awake Purified Drinking Water, one for life. For bulk purchase, contact 0262-351-251. <laughs> my club is by GTP. It's still timeless. You can't go wrong with GTP. And of course, the dress was made for me by Ophelia Crosslanders. I told her that Sandra is coming. said, don't worry. I'll fix you something. And I just love what she made for me. Isn't it nice? It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Makeup by Inshilo. And then, of course, my hair also by Inshilo. Beats by... Sun beats and all. They did my anklet as well and uh, my earring, my beautiful earring. I just love them. They look you, but they are very, very light. Very light, you know. Don't worry. It's light, so my ear is not coming off. Don't worry. Very, very light, okay? And then pa Paba Cosmetics gives us the makeup products. So Paba, you know, you can go. It's all all the shades of you. You, you, you. you'll get it there. Whichever shade you are, go to Paba and you'll get it. Sandra, how's it like growing up? Growing up was great. Um, I grew up in Accra and Tema. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so there's a bit of Tema in you. Oh, I'm a Tema girl. I read hey! TM for life. I read TM all day. All TM day. for life. <laughs> in fact, my parents still live in Tema oh, to okay. date, yes. So um, I come from a, a family of um, six. There was okay. my parents, both of them still alive, kicking. And doing together? Very well. And together. Awesome. And together. And I have um, three other siblings. We are four okay. in total. So, my, which part of Tema did you go? Community one and ten. Now we oh, live in ten. ten. But okay. when I was growing up, um, in my earlier years, we lived in Community one. One, okay. My dad okay. was in the Navy. Okay. He's retired okay, so now. So, the Naval Base. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, um, growing up was good. Um, what I remember of it... Mm -hmm. Um, we are a very close-knit family. Um, parents are great. Siblings are great sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> sometimes you just want to yeah, work. Um, I have two other sisters, an older one and a, a younger one, okay. and an older brother. Okay. Okay, so you three girls and a... And a boy. Boy, okay. And so I'm you, the third. You're the third, okay. Last but one. Yeah. Last but one. Yeah. I could have been baby last. Uh, most of the time, yeah, my little sister. They, uh, you know, they <laughs> always blame us, the baby last, for coming uh, uh, late. Yeah. But you schooled in Tema Primary School? Um, I did. I went to um, Tema Parents when we lived in Tema. Oh. When we moved to Accra, we lived in Bema Camp. Like okay. I said, my dad was in, yes. in the Navy. So okay. um, I went to services basic school. Um, and so then I went you've been a barracks girl? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> in Tema, we, we didn't live in the barracks. Oh, okay. But um, in Accra, we did in Bema Camp. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I went on to Akosombo International School. Oh, okay. And hey. <laughs> I know some Akosombo people here. Yeah. Are you impressed? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I went to Akosombo and then um, I went to the UK to do my first degree and my master's in law. Okay. Um, I did my master's in international and commercial law. Okay. With a specialization in world trade. I see. Finished, came back to Makola. Okay, to the law school, which is located so in Makola. Every time I say Makola, <laughs> people are like, oh, why were you selling this? <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, because the law school is in Makola, it would be just um, yeah. anyone, anyone with a legal background. When you say Makola, they get they it. They did, yes. So um, I went to Makola to do the professional course, and then, yeah. Here you are. And here I am. Would you, would you say you had a a happy childhood? Oh, definitely. Mm. Definitely. I, I don't think that I, I lacked anything. Within reason. Within, okay. <laughs> yeah, within, I, was, I was well looked after. Do you still I, keep in touch with some of the... My childhood friends. friends. Yes. Oh, some of my day ones. Yes, I, I still you, have you some just of my day still, ones. Still and there are some, some that, of course, you lose touch with touch, along yeah, the way. Definitely. But yeah. um, it, it was great. Mm. It was a good... Those were oh, good times. It was simple I times. I know, right? You, know? um, you were the latter days baby <laughs> saying Tema. Me Tema come to eight through hey. You 67. Oh, yeah, you are proper Tema. Well, come to I eight. Come, eight. Come to, thank you. <laughs> you wrote. <laughs> Near Gem Nightclub. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I still live in Tema. That's the real Tema. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And what was your dream growing up? I know that I always wanted to be a lawyer. Oh, okay. That's one I know. Even my father tells stories of how when the phone would ring at home, I would run shouting, hey, mama, 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 <laughs> I don't know what an ordinary has to do with being a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. We don't shout in the courtrooms or anywhere, but I that's what I remember that I oh I knew I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. That was one dream that I, I knew mm-hmm. that I had growing up. Other dreams, I don't know, I'm sure I have the the mm. same dreams as any other little girl growing up, getting married, having kids and all of mm-hmm. those things. But mm. Let way. me let me pry a bit. When you were let's say in our face in on social media what was the reaction of your parents? My parents are not on social media. So but I don't think they know. knew much of what was going on. But of course, I'm sure their friends, there are times when they call me, hey, someone said this and this. Okay. Oh, you're in this country. And, uh, you know, they would pass comments here and there. Yeah, yeah. My dad is a bit old school. He's a bit old fashioned, very conservative. Yes, so um, he doesn't say much. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, know he doesn't <laughs> really like it. But he will still give you the room to do what you want to do because you're an adult yeah. and he hopes that you know better. Mm. And I, I've always been a good kid, I mm. think. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to ask them. But I, th- I think so. So I don't think they were too worried. Just they just left me. They too, knew the much. kind of girl exactly, they raised. Exactly. Yeah. And so that they were okay. My mom, is, my mom is cool. She's a cool mom. So mm. she didn't Moms complain are always special, Exactly. They? Exactly. Would you say you are happy now? Oh, absolutely. Compared to the life you had grown up, Sandra, that we knew you mean, two or um, three years compared ago. Compared to my child. Oh, two, yeah, three years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. I think I have grown so much. and um, You made the right decision made... leaving that kind of um, impression that you were giving. Absolutely. And like I said, it's not as if it was a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Traveling is not a bad thing. No. Wearing clothes and posing for pictures is not a bad thing. If that is what you're about. That was not what all what I was about. There were other things that added up to make me or add up to make me who I am. Mm. And I felt like it was getting lost. I felt like I didn't like I didn't Let, like Let's be frank here. Were you bothered when you go to places and you mention your name Sandra Kobia and everybody uh, people say, Oh, you're the one on social media I read Were yes. you bothered about that? Um it, it, it depends, you know, it depends on how the person says it, I think. And I was bothered when I began to take my legal career seriously and I felt or I was getting the impression that some of my colleagues were not taking me so seriously because they had a different perception about me. Mm. And perception is perception yeah. until you prove yourself or you do otherwise. So until you get to know me or you get to work with me and realize that there is more to me or I can actually deliver or I'm actually good at what I do, mm-hmm. you'll be left with that other impression Pretty about sure. the happy-go-lucky girl who's mm-hmm. all about dressing nicely Steve. and taking pictures and posing and traveling mm-hmm. here and doing all sorts mm-hmm. of things. And so posing I... Posing sexy? Not always, <laughs> but sometimes, you know, sometimes, right. posing in swimsuits and all yeah. of that. There's nothing wrong with it. I, yeah. I have to stress. And I must say that anytime you pose in swimsuit, you wear by the beach. Exactly. What else yeah. was I supposed to exactly. wear? Exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, today, if I went to some location where I was by the beach and I took pictures and I felt like posting one in a swimsuit, I would. I would still post it, but I would make sure that next week I'll post something about work so that you don't get confused. I, I think it's just, it's just a strategy for me. for me. You're right. Right. But you are happy with who you are now. I'm very, very happy. Okay. So now I'm you are... I'm happy with where I am. I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. I'm happy to have been able to change what I didn't like to turn it around into a positive. So hmm. I, I, I'm good. I'm very and did good. that decision, making that conscious strategic move, did it just come or it was a gradual process? Um, I don't think it was a, a gradual process. I, I woke up one day and decided I, I don't 
I don't want this. It wasn't something it I was off. thinking about. Oh, should I change myself? Should I rebrand? Should I know? It, it just happened sometime in 2016. Mm. 2016, I believe. Yes, 2016. I just woke up one day and said, no, this is not all there is to me. I can't, you know, I can't have people just have just this. And especially when people would ask, ah, are you practicing? Are you sure you're a lawyer? And I was practicing. Another thing is that it's against the, the ethics of the profession to pose or post pictures in my gown and my wig. Yeah. So even till this day, with all the rebranding and everything, you mm. won't see me post a picture. Mm. Unless it's in the courtroom mm. yeah. and it's a big case or something and the media picture. But I mm. can't on my own take a picture and post on social yeah. media. Unless so you will never you be see called that. To the Except you on the, the day. Picture. That's the only day you're allowed to post a picture yeah. of you in your gown and your wig. And I can't also talk about my, my work. I can't talk about cases and stuff. So I can't come on social media. And, so I think people don't know that. So when they weren't seeing that and all they were seeing was the other side, they felt like, ah, girl, you girl, you're sure mm -hmm. you're a lawyer and you're practicing, you know. But I can't do that. So I have to explain to people I'm not allowed to do that. So, you know, as much as you see me posting other pictures, you never, even if I'm practicing, you'll never see me post a picture in my gown. I can be mm -hmm. disbarred for it. Right. Okay. So, okay, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, what was I going with that? <laughs> you know, you're talking about the fact that you didn't think about it. It wasn't like, let me consider, let me see. But you just woke up. I just woke up, exactly, that. because I felt like people were not taking me seriously. But there were other things that I can do or could do to portray that serious aspect of me. And I've done that. Mm. I mean, it's not just about posting a picture, going to court or anything. There are other things that I can do to show that I'm actually mm. practicing or I am serious. Right. So I started portraying the more serious or the more professional mm. Would you side say, you, of me. Did you lose some friends when you became this no. serious? No, no, because I'm, I've always picked or chosen my friends very carefully. I pick people that are kind of like me, people who are serious, people who are hardworking, people who are go-getters, people who understand. And they understood the process. They all got where I was going with it. Mm. So they were fine. And I don't have a lot of friends. I have a close circle of some very good friends. Yes. So they understood me. They mm. understand me. Wow. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> You've done well. Thank you. You've done well because... Uh, some will say that being in the limelight consistently can be addictive. Yes. Can be addictive. So moving can be really tough. But you did it so smoothly. Um, also because maybe I, I had something to fall back on. Right. I had, I, I, had, <laughs> I, had, I had a plan. There was something to do. For others, maybe there's no plan B. B if you're yeah. not in the limelight or you're not doing what you're doing, what else are you going, going to, to do? do? And I also felt it was easier for me because I... Okay, I said this before and I was kind of misquoted, so I want to choose my words very carefully. Okay. Being in the media or being out there, being known, is good, was good. But it wasn't everything. It isn't everything. I make more money or I, I have a better standard of living doing my professional job than I did being in the media yeah. or being in the limelight. For me, I'm speaking from a personal exactly. perspective. Exactly. I, I, I totally understand. It didn't really pay me. Mm. I didn't make loads of money mm. from it. You were making money for some people. Bloggers <laughs> blogging about you. and Yeah, maybe some money. other people. The money was going to <laughs> other to channels. Pay, yeah. But for me personally... It wasn't, it was nice. It was, it was, I was passionate about mm. being in the media. I was passionate about live television. I'm still okay. very passionate about it. And if the right show comes I'm along, sorry, or if do. I decide I wanted to um, do something on television, I mm. would do, and I think I will do. Okay. I will do something um, mm. in the not so distant future. Okay, let me tease you a bit. You didn't but like being referred to as a slay queen. I still don't. <laughs> that is one phrase that I, you know, it's not a bad thing, but I think we've kind of, misused it to the point where it's become derogatory. When you say someone is a slave queen, it's... 
Well, let me take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with that. You know, you're watching the standpoint. And um, I say thank you to all our supporters. Go got you got House of Foods, Cake Tech. Auntie Vera, I miss you. Yeah, please, the watch it, you know. <laughs> Kate Technique, thank you so much for supporting us during the, our 10th anniversary celebration. The cake, the, the anniversary cake you made for us was great. Kate Technique, we thank you so much for that. Yet Cleaning Services keeps our environment clean. And, of course, let me mention some of my favorite people at Casa Preco. That's Eunice, Linda, Chris, you know. Thank you so much for supporting us. That's, um, they give us the... Royal drinks in our wick purified um, drinking water. Thank you to all of them. And uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll see the way forward. What is next for Sandra? Rebranding or is it rebranded? We'll be back. I'm a beneficiary of the Girl in Need Foundation. Some time ago, there was no hope for me to go to school. But through the Girl in Need Foundation, I was able to complete my secondary education. I quite remember when we completed JHS, things became very, very tough. But with the help of God and the help of this foundation, which is the Girl in Need Child Foundation, now we are who we are today. And this foundation are really, has really, really helped me. So I'm pleading with you that you help with any amount you have. Please give something out. Donate at least one CD for a girl. It will change one one's life. Remember, your one city can touch a life out there, can make impact in the life of somebody. Hi lady, welcome back. Now, I'll give opportunity to three people in the audience to ask a question straight to the point kind of question one question at a time one from limitless um, organization one from Adeshe incorporated and then one from wisconsin university the new branding of you do you think um, t a time will come for you to change it or still maintain it for the best impact on your fans okay um, well, you know, I, I never say never, and as humans, we are always evolving. If I ever rebrand, it would still be in a positive light. It would be maybe towards achieving something better. And um, I don't know how to explain that to you, but it would, it would be for something that would mm. impact positively on my life mm. and the lives of other people. So it won't be uh, going back. Going back. It's it's a forward. It would be a forward mm -hmm. process. She so. is a woman on the move, <laughs> exactly. baby. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right then. I think uh, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, what motivated you? You've told us about your life and everything. Um, who did you look up to whilst growing up? What motivated you? And did you ever have any challenges as a woman? I think I've always been driven. Um, to be successful, I used to say that I was fear, I was um, scared of um, failing, mm. but I've changed that mindset. It's part of the process, so it's okay to fail as long as, of course, you get back up on your feet. Mm. And so I've always wanted to achieve all the goals that I set for myself. Those are the things that motivate me. If I decide that this is what I'm going to do, I have mm. to make sure that I achieve results. And so far, touch wood, mm. it's, been, it's been good. I've been able to achieve everything that I've set my sights on. Mm. So if you're I, about to set more goals? Oh, definitely. I okay. set goals every day. Every day. It's, it's, it's a process, mm. this life journey. And so mm. every time, as and when I decide or set my eyes on something, mm. I try to go all out and make it happen. Mm. And is there anyone who inspires you? Growing up, it was my mother. Mm. My mother inspired me. Um, she was just so hardworking, so classy, so gracious. You know, I, I feel very blessed to have her because I feel like being who I am today, I couldn't have 
been or done the things that I have done or be who that who I am if it wasn't for the kind of values that my mother instilled in me. So mm -hmm. I looked up to her a lot growing up. As I've become older, I'm just motivated by successful people, people mm. who are ambitious, people who set their sights on things and they go all out to achieve them. So it could be anyone. Mm. It could be the tomato seller in Makola. It could be Michelle Obama. It could be Hillary for attempting to break the glass ceiling. It could mm. be anyone at all. Okay. All right. Adeshe. So my question is, as a lawyer, how did you enter the media space? Why did you choose to start from the media before diverting now? Okay. And so I didn't choose to start from the from the from the media. I was in law school. I was, I mean, I, I went to law school. I did my first degree in two thousand and five, and did my masters in two thousand and eight. So it was always the law before anything else. The law is my first love. The law comes before anything else. So it was the law before all these other things. Um, the media, it just, it happened. Um, it just happened. I was, when I came back from the UK and I was about to enter the law school at Makola, that first year they wouldn't take um, foreign students, they called it. So there was this law, there was this period where I was not doing anything. I'd made some friends in the showbiz space and I began to hang out with them a bit. And I was also very, um, interested in this show that was on television at the time, um, Fashion Police. Mm. Uh, may her, her soul rest in peace. Mm. The, uh, I, I loved that show, and so I decided to kind of, and okay, hanging around with these um, celebrities, I, I kind of saw the kind of things that they were wearing out and okay. certain events and things, and I, I had an eye for fashion at the time, and so putting that side by side with this show that I loved watching on TV, so I was like, okay, yeah. I have this whole year where I'm not doing anything. I like this show. I've seen this kind of space in this celebrity world. Why don't I do something like this? Right. And that's how come uh, I started the show Fashion 101. That was mm. my first entry into television. And so I did that um, for two seasons, two or three, two seasons. And then TV3 um, approached me. They wanted, they actually wanted me to read the news. They wanted me to be one of their news anchors. I went for a couple of um, classes, a couple of lessons. I think after the second one, I said, no, I, this, this is not, not for me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. I'm not a news reader. It was too restrictive. Mm -hmm. and it, it just wasn't me. I wasn't passionate about it. I, I'd, ne I'd, never, I'd never aspired to a career in television or even reading the news. Let mm -hmm. me put it that way. So it wasn't something I was passionate about. So I, I just uh, respectfully declined. And then they came back and said, oh, OK, we're actually starting a new show. Um, a morning show, it's more of a lifestyle um, oriented, so would you like to be one of the presenters on that? We have three other presenters. It's like, okay, that, this is more suited to me, it's more of a lifestyle. So that means they saw something in you that they wanted. I guess so, mm. I guess so. So then, um, I was happy with that because that was more laid back, it was mm. more my style, it was lifestyle. I mean, we had the newspaper review and all the serious stuff, but we also had the lifestyle section, we had the fashion segment, we had... Later on, they added a legal desk for yeah, me, specifically yeah. for me. So it was okay. Well, I was happy with that. And that's how come I got into television. So it wasn't television before the law. The law had, had always, always been, been there. there. Television just kind of happened. And, um, because I met somebody who was in school, primary school with you, and said, Sandra has always been brilliant in class. Wow. Always yeah. been brilliant. I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. But as you said, um, we didn't know that. No, of you. no, people, people, people didn't know. I What's the bigger picture them. now? The bigger what is picture, next step for you? What um, do you want to do? Right now, do I'm doing do? exactly what I want to do. Um, I'm, pra I'm practicing law the way I want to practice it. So I work with the firm. I do my desk stuff the way I want to do it. I go to court when I have to. Um, in fact, I go to court more often with FIDA. I work mm. with an organization called FIDA, International mm. Federation of Women, women Lawyers. Lawyers. And um, basically what we do is we enhance and promote the welfare of women and children. So um, we offer legal aid for women you who know, I, I was, I was I was surprised when I, you told me you were with FIDA. FIDA. <laughs> I'm actually the PRO for FIDA. PRO for FIDA. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, um, so women, women. Why, why, before you could talk, why, why did you decide? Why did I choose FIDA? 
someone invited me. <laughs> there's no there's mm -hmm. no story to it. It's just someone, one of the women there saw me one day and said, Oh Sandra, I think you should you should join us. You should um And you like it there? I love it there. Mm. I love it there. In fact, I see myself in the next couple of years leaving um, practice, leaving my firm and doing not just FIDA, but things along the lines of FIDA more mm -hmm. seriously. Advocating more, for women, advocating legal rights. rights and yes. Okay. I see myself doing more. I mean, I went to FIDA and I was, uh, it was a real eye opener for me. So let me just explain a bit of what we do there so mm. that you can get the picture. Um, we give legal services to women who can't afford it. Women, you have to be poor. So I'm sorry, but you can't come to us. Ah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your money is too long. So basically, we give legal aid, um, court <laughs> representation, mediation, legal aid outreaches, and, and literacy programs and things like that. So most of the cases that we see come to us have to do with marital issues, domestic violence, and things like that. And some of the stories are so sad that you you can't help but you you put yourself in them. You become emotionally you become, involved. Exactly. Somehow. Yeah. But um, I'm happy to say that we are able to help a lot of these women, if not maybe about 99 or 100 percent of them, we're able to resolve a lot of our cases without having to take them into court. Oh, we hardly go to court. We are able to resolve most of the issues. At FIDA, mm. but when we have to go to court, we go. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. If uh, a young lady is watching you who knew or th thought she knew the Sandra and Cobia during the days of old when you were in our face, and um, she's watching you today and she's a bit confused. She wanted to be Sandra Kobia all over traveling and all that. You know, and now Sandra says, oh, that's not what she wants. I mean, it's a bit confused. I have heard what? this so many times. Oh, oh yes. okay. <laughs> so I'm okay. not surprised. Okay, so yeah. what have you got to say? To I would just say that it was a personal decision. Um, like I've been repeating throughout the show, it's not that the old Sandra was bad. It's not that the things I was doing was bad. It was just not all there is to me. Mm. I have other friends, I mean, not so close friends, who, I mean, have witnessed the rebranding journey and said, oh, but there was nothing wrong with this. That's who you are. You should have, you know, you don't owe anybody an explanation. And I say to them, yes, you're absolutely right, but it's a personal decision. For me, I believe that this is not all, this is not where it ends. It's a journey, and the internet never forgets. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be portrayed in a certain way. This is how I want to be seen. If this is how you want to be seen, it's absolutely fine. This is you. Stick to you. Do you. I believe in that as well. Mm. I don't believe that you should change for somebody. I haven't changed for, for somebody anybody. or anybody. I changed for myself. And it wasn't exactly a change. It was just bringing into consciousness everything that makes that adds up to make me me. So it, it's not, it's, it's kind of dicey. It's not a bad thing. If that is what is for you, you, do you. But I believe this is what works for me or this is what I want to work for me. So this is what I'm doing. And it's working for you. It is absolutely working. You know, me. when I knew that you were not going to be the same Sandra and Kobe again, when? when you went for the mentorship program in US, Right. I just knew that you would come back a different. Well, because, because I actually started before, but it okay. was in 2016, the yes. end of 2016 that that happened. Mm. I went in 2017, mm. but it started, it had started, you're right. Yeah. It had but started I just, a few months prior yeah, to that. The women you were going to meet, I knew that you would come back and be the same. something was and definitely. And I, I haven't been the same. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time with us. I think um, a lot of people have learned a lot. You know, um, let me be quick to ask the audience what you have learned. I have learned you should always be yourself. You should decide for yourself. Let's, don't just let the media or any other person decide for you. Just be you and then be who you want to be and okay. it will work for you. Yeah. Well, I have learned that you should always set a goal, set a target for yourself and then plan tactically to achieve them. Amen to that. <laughs> And with that, I'll be back with a bit of me.
There was one experience that I had um, in particular with a child soldier who captured an old man and he tied him at the back like this. And I told my mom, I think I was like six years old, six or seven, I told her I'm going to free that old man. She said, aren't you afraid of the child soldier? We used to call them rebels. Right. So I went to him and I pleaded with him to release the old man. And he looked at me, he, he let the old man go. And some of my Ghanaian friends, the immigration people, they say, Liberia, Budumburam. I said, no, no, not Budumburam. Budumburam is a home away from home, home, but it doesn't define Liberians. Yes. My number one achievement was working with the young girls mm. that I worked with because that was my platform, Girls Education. So I launched another pageant called the Miss Education Awareness Pageant. Miss had, Education? Yes, where we were going to the different high schools and scouting brilliant girls to groom them and instill in them the value and appreciation for education. Stop asking people questions that only God can answer. Mm. Yes, only God has answers for certain questions. Not you, I mean like our yeah, friends. Yes, yes, people yes, asking yes. when will you get the married, married when, when will you do this, when will you do that. Some of those things, only God has the answer. That's the, my school's motto. Life is it's all about you. Of course, it's a journey. You meet people along the way. You meet some who will help you. Others will betray you. Some will love you. Some will hate you. Some will admire you. Some will just ignore you. It's all part of life. You will fail sometimes. You make mistakes. But what is important is that you pick yourself up all the time and keep moving. You see, there's one constant thing about life is that it changes. Change is inevitable. So having or making a conscious effort to change who you are is never a bad thing. As a woman, I always say, you constantly have to add value to yourself. There must come a time when you pause, relax, think about your life, and decide, is this what I want? Where am I going? Do I really want to go there? Or I need to change course? But it must be your decision. Your decision. Of course, taking into consideration a lot of factors. The greater good. But you have to be happy. You have to be fulfilled. You have to be satisfied. You have to be complete. Hello, God created you complete. To be able. To be able to influence others. To impact on other lives. So, hey. Yes, you can rebrand. You can rebrand. You can change who you are or who you want to be. You can. The only thing you can change, your sex. Hey, these days they even change it too. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can change your parents or your siblings. But all other things are within your reach. As for me, you know, I'm a woman with super crazy faith in God. I believe God has got me covered. There's nothing I would do without, you know, going up to the man first. Going to him and asking him about where he wants me to go. But he has given us wisdom. We need to make decisions for ourselves. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. And please, whatever you do. Be beautiful, be happy, be excited, be the woman on the move. We'll be back same time next week. Bye for now.